Hi, it's Graphics Couchlight Gamer. This Lenovo ThinkPad X220i was manufactured over a decade ago, and today I'm going to be looking at how well it holds up in 2022. This laptop was previously owned by a college. When I originally got it, all the components were completely stock, but since then I've upgraded it with another 4GB of DDR3 RAM and a 250GB Samsung 840 EVO SSD. The ThinkPad X220i was a lower end version of the X220 but could not be had with an IPS display or an i5 or i7 processor. Specifications wise the CPU is an Intel Core i3-2350M at 2.3GHz and the laptop uses integrated graphics which is the Intel HD3000. It has a 12.5 inch 1366x768 LED backlit TN LCD. For its time, it's quite a light laptop, weighing just 1.35 kilos. The original retail price was 1,300 Australian dollars, but this one was purchased second hand for $60 about six years ago, which at the time, and even now, is a bargain. This X220i is my main laptop, and I have been using it with Windows 10 now for a few years with no issues. I even put Windows 11 on another hard drive that also works fine. For the purpose of this video, Windows 10 will be the operating system of choice for running various benchmarks on this PC. The ThinkPad browses the internet and views 720p 60fps YouTube videos perfectly as expected for any laptop of these kinds of specs. Word also works great on this laptop. This all proves that the 2011 Lenovo ThinkPad X220i is still a good business laptop today. But the real question is, can it game? Before starting gaming benchmarks, I'll be installing modded drivers for the Intel HD3000 iGPU to hopefully give it a chance at performing decently in some DirectX 10 and older games. The unofficial adapter is called the PHGD Omega 5.0 and should give the graphics processing unit at least a bit of a performance boost. Off to a bad start in the gaming benchmarks, Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012 was a showcase of poor performance, only achieving 16 FPS on average throughout the 10 min fraps benchmark. Dropping to resolutions any lower than 800 by 600 causes the game to crash. Most Wanted 2012 was very poorly optimised and so the game really does require, at minimum, a beefier GPU with at least 2GB of VRAM, as shown by the Steam system requirements. The port of this game from console wasn't done very well and is one of the reasons for such low FPS when compared to other better made games for PC. I only attempted to change the video settings in game, but I have read that it may be possible to get best performance by modifying the INI file. Up next, with totally opposite results, is Battlefield 2, which ran extremely well on all high settings with no anti aliasing. This isn't too surprising considering that it's a 2005 DirectX 9 game but it's still a fun game among many that are perfectly playable on older but still useful hardware. For the majority of the time, the game didn't even drop below 50 frames per second. Overall, I found Battlefield 2 to be a smooth experience that is definitely assisted by the use of modded drivers. Minecraft 1.8.9 was a good experience on this ThinkPad, achieving an average frame rate of 28 frames per second. This is generally considered to be fine for Minecraft, however to achieve this target, I was forced to lower the video settings all the way and decrease the render distance to just 8 chunks. This is less than ideal for a competitive player, but for someone looking for a pleasant experience offline or in an non-player versus player online game, then this laptop would suit their needs. The minimum Minecraft system requirements are definitely misleading because it is stated that you need at least a Core i3-3210 CPU at 3.2GHz and an Intel HD Graphics 4000 to play, which is not necessary. 
I did not use any mods such as OptiFine which most likely would have assisted my game performance but I do recommend looking into these if you'd like to play Minecraft on a computer with older hardware. I didn't expect much from Crisis 2, but I was still expecting more than this. The system requirements request at minimum a PC with much older and worse hardware than this, which is why it came as a slight surprise when this game was barely playable at 720p resolution at absolute minimum graphical settings. This is most likely because of the lack of DirectX 11 support and also the fact that the recommended GPU is the AMD Radeon HD4870 or NVIDIA GeForce GTX 280 and I was using Intel HD 3000 graphics. Unfortunately I had no way to run this game in full screen mode due to it crashing within about a minute if playing in full screen. The game was for some reason also very blurry making it even more difficult to play. The blur was so bad I could only just make out the HUD. So no. This old ThinkPad cannot run Crisis 2. Throughout the entirety of the 3 minute fraps benchmark, Divinity Original Sin never went over a maximum frames per second of 23. This is because the game is very CPU intensive even at lower settings. The reason for this is that the turn based system taxes a lot of CPU power especially on higher difficulty settings where there's more AI. The AI's calculation and engine draw a lot of processing power. The average FPS was a mediocre 18. However, despite the poor frame rate, I do believe this game to still be playable on the ThinkPad. It's not real time so to play the game well you don't require any sort of quick mouse movements or ultra fast response time as long as the resolution is no higher than 720p and the other video settings are all set to lowest then playing Divinity Original Sin on the ThinkPad X220i should be fine as long as you don't mind the game looking terrible. Finishing off the benchmarks with a synthetic benchmark Cinebench R23. Cinebench is a CPU benchmarking software to test the real world performance of processors. After rendering an image using Cinema 4D's 3D engine, it gives the CPU both a multi-core and single-core score. After running both tests, Cinebench displays an MP ratio which is the ratio of both results. The i3-2350M in this machine got a multi-core score of 817 points, a single-core score of 375 points and an MP ratio of times 2.18. This means that the CPU performs about 2.18 times better generally when you... During stress testing the CPU using MSI Combustor for 15 minutes, the i3-2350M reached a maximum temperature of 87 degrees Celsius and had a maximum power consumption of 35 watts. Displayed is a screenshot of the settings that I used. Despite 85 degrees being the maximum temperature allowed at the die of this CPU, it did not thermal throttle at all throughout the 15 minutes, staying at 2293 MHz for the entire duration. If you have this laptop or any old computer, I recommend that you replace the thermal paste on the CPU. In older computers, this can offer a slight decrease in temperatures and it is a good idea to replace it every 5 years or so depending on the quality of the paste. So, is the Lenovo ThinkPad X220i worth it in 2022? Well, if you're using it already, I highly recommend upgrading to more than 4GB of RAM and definitely put an SSD in it because the difference in loading times will save you hours even if you only use this laptop for a month. As for gaming with its wimpy 2nd gen i3 CPU and even wimpier HD 3000 iGPU, it's certainly going to struggle running any kind of modern game, even on lower settings. In fact, most modern games won't even run at all because of the lack of DirectX 11 and above support. But for office use and playing older games, this laptop still holds up perfectly 
and performs admirably in 2022. If you can get this laptop for under $120, then it's a steal, especially if you're looking for something light with decent battery life. If, however, you're looking for something mobile to use primarily for gaming, look elsewhere. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you didn't, feel free to dislike, and let me know what you'd like to see me improve on in the comments if you dis dislike. If you would like to see more like this, please consider subscribing and allowing notifications so you won't ever miss a graphics couch later gamer video. Also, I now have a Discord server which will be linked in the description. Please come and check it out. Thanks for watching until the end.